Jonah was a prophet of the Old Testament and is most famous for being swallowed by a fish. In the book of Jonah, God reveals to him the wickedness of a neighboring Gentile city called Nineveh. Jonah, in his prejudice and disobedience, decides to set out the exact opposite direction of Nineveh. Scholars believe that Jonah was prejudiced because of the context in which he lived in. During this time, many Jews did not have any association or dealings with Gentiles. They often would have only known of the sinful and pagan nature of their neighboring cities, and they avoided them with contempt. As the account of Jonah goes, Jonah flees from the Lord by ship to a place called Tarshish, which is the opposite direction. Jonah, asleep on the boat, is awakened by the captain of the ship, who tells him to pray to his God to see if the storms will cease. The sailors cast lots to see who is responsible for the treacherous storm, and it falls on Jonah, which leads to the sailors throwing him overboard. Following this, Jonah is swallowed by a large fish or whale, and this is where the story changes. The conventional perspective from this point onward is that Jonah lives inside the fish for three days and three nights. However, details from the original text and King James Version indicate that Jonah died before he was spit out by the fish. Some of the other translations have been changed and do not reflect the same details as the original text. Jonah being thrown overboard inevitably drowns, and as a result God sends a large fish or whale to swallow him whole in order to preserve his body for three days and three nights. Jonah's soul departs from his body, and as he is swept deep into the earth under the mountains and in the water, this is where the Bible refers to as hell being located. Jonah recites how his spirit cries out in torment in hell, longing for God. It is during this time in which he repents and God resurrects him. Jonah's spirit returns to his body and God causes the fish to spit him out on land. Jonah enters Nineveh and preaches to the Gentiles there. He cries out to them saying, In forty days Nineveh shall be overthrown. The city believes him, they repent, and the king declares a great time of fasting and prayer. This pleases God greatly and he spares the city. But Jonah is upset and angry. He believes that regardless of his cries to the city, God would have inevitably forgiven the Gentiles of Nineveh and spared them. God has a plant grown and flourish over Jonah, giving him shade from the sweltering sun, but then causes a worm to destroy the plant. By doing this, Jonah grows even more weary and God shows in contrast how Jonah is so concerned that a plant rose up without any effort of Jonah, yet Jonah was not even troubled for the 120,000 in Nineveh who were about to perish. Now the prophecy and sign of Jonah has to do more with Jesus than Jonah. In the book of Matthew, Jesus is confronted by the Pharisees. They say to him, If you are the Son of God, show us a miracle. Jesus, knowing their hearts, instead replies that the only sign that will be given is the sign of Jonah. Jesus says, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. He was prophesying his own death, resurrection, and journey into the underworld, unbeknownst to the crowd and the Pharisees. Although Jonah ran from God, it is remarkable at how God used him, even though he chose to turn his back. Upon boarding the ship, the boat was filled with Gentile sailors. After their encounter with Jonah and the storm, every member of the ship entered into a covenant with God, and Jonah had not even begun to follow what the Lord had commanded him. Like ourselves, we can often choose to turn our back on God and let the ship set sail in the opposite direction. But instead, let us remind ourselves of His great love and sacrifice for us, that we could live in communion with Him in heaven one day. What the enemy uses for evil, God can turn it around and use for the greater good. If serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24, 15.